Gnome 48, Bengaluru, Ubuntu 25.04, Plucky Puffin, and Fedora 42 were recently released, so let's take a look at their new features and improvements. Also, join the Penguin Byte Discord community to be notified for announcements and uploads, ask all sorts of Linux-related questions, participate in polls and decisions like voting on what the next video will be, share your opinions and suggestions, and chat with me and the community. I also hold ranked game tournaments, casual game nights, regular VCs, and special events in the Discord server. Join with the link in the description down below. Firstly, a new digital well-being category has been added to settings, designed to keep your health in check and reduce bad habits like being on the computer too much and not taking any breaks. Digital well-being includes features like a screen time usage panel for viewing your screen time and comparing it to other days or weeks, as well as your average, screen time limits which will notify you and make the screen monochrome when the specified limit is reached, and reminders which notify you to take breaks for eyesight or movement. You can also enable sounds to notify you when your break is over, and you can delay the break. Taking it will dim the screen until the break ends. Next, in the general page of the power tab, below the battery level section, a new battery charging section has been added, with a maximized charge option that fully charges the battery, which is the default, and a new preserve battery health option to only charge the battery up to 80% for a longer battery lifespan. Note, this feature is limited to hardware that supports it. Next, GNOME 48 has finally introduced system-level HDR support, which can be enabled in display settings if your display supports HDR. Sadly, since I don't have any devices with HDR displays, I cannot present this feature, but it is a huge milestone for the GNOME project. Finally, along with the overall settings design being updated to the latest Liquid White version and widgets, multiple settings panels have been redesigned and modernized. The Alert Sound dialog in the Sound tab and the Cursor Size dialog in the Seeing page of the Accessibility tab are now their own pages instead of dialogs. Next, the Power tab has gotten a big redesign, moving the power saving options into their own page while keeping all the other options as well as the new battery health options under the Battery Charging section in the General page. While the layout of the General options hasn't really changed, the Power Saving page has reorganized its options a bit. Automatic suspend options are no longer in a dialog, but rather their own section under the other options, while automatic screen blank has become a toggle with the delay options presented below it. Next, in the appearance tab, the accent colors were separated from the style section into their own accent color section, right below the style section. Next, in the online accounts tab, if you're logged into, for example, your Google account, you can change the display name directly in the sync options dialog. Speaking of online account dialogues, they have been modernized with the white to button row widgets. Lastly, the color tab has been renamed to color management, and the formats dialog in the region and language page of the system tab has been redesigned to be more modern. Gnome 48 got three new apps, and some apps have received major changes, all of which we will be taking a look at today. Before we get into it, note that most, if not all, apps in GNOME 48 have been updated to the latest Libid to elements. Like toggle groups from GNOME 48, GNOME 47's new loading spinner, and many more. Therefore, I will not be mentioning subtle changes like that. For a while, GNOME has used Totem as its video player, which is pretty subpar, has several bugs, and hasn't seen many changes over the years. So a new Libid to video player called Showtime, which is much simpler, more beautiful, and works better, has been introduced in GNOME 48 to replace the aging Totem. Options are also better organized and easier to find. For example, the playback controls menu, subtitles menu, and rotation options in the general menu have been merged under one gear icon for simplicity, which is much cleaner and easier to use. A new Libidwaita audio player has been added called Decibels, which is completely new as GNOME has never had an audio player before, not counting music players. It's extremely simple, so there isn't much for me to cover here, although I suppose it works, but the inability to play multiple audio files in a row in a single window is disappointing. In fact, it doesn't even have the ability to put a track on repeat. However, at least it can change the playback speed of the track, so that's something. 
I believe Ambrawl should be integrated into the GNOME suite to replace GNOME Music and Decibels, as it is simple yet quite useful and works flawlessly for playing music or any kind of audio. Lupe, the Libetwai to image viewer introduced in GNOME 45, just received a new image editing panel for cropping, rotating, and flipping images. This can be opened with the Edit Image button in the header bar. Next, the Delete Image button in the Open Files window has been moved from the header bar to the menu, and the Copy to Clipboard button in the header bar was removed altogether, presumably because you could already do that using the right-click menu. The Full Screen Overlay button was also moved to the header bar, and the individual left and right overlay buttons were merged into one overlay element with the left and right buttons. Next, the individual plus and minus zoom overlay buttons have been replaced with an overlay zoom menu consisting of a toggle zoom button, which if clicked will zoom into the image and will give you the option to zoom in further or zoom out to regular size, and a zoom to specific level menu with options to zoom 50%, 66%, 100% which is regular size, 200%, and 300%. You can also enter a custom zoom size in the field below the predefined options, or of course just zoom in with your mouse or touchpad. You can also always click the toggle zoom button to return to regular size. The GNOME text editor has received a few changes. Firstly, the editing options menu in the header bar has been removed for simplicity and its options have been moved to the preferences dialog, making it more useful. The Clear History button in Preferences has also been ported to the Edwaita button row widget introduced in GNOME 47 with Libadwaita 1.6 for consistency with other GNOME apps. Replacing the Editing Options menu is a new info panel with the file name, file location which can be clicked to show a Nautilus, document type and the ability to select a different one from a long set of choices, encoding which can be changed, line feed which can also be changed, some editing options added from the old editing options menu, and some document statistics. Also, Text Editor 48 now uses the new Nautilus file picker introduced in GNOME 47. A new Libadwaita PDF viewer called Papers has been added to replace the aging events, which hasn't gotten many changes in years. Like events, Papers has a simple UI. However, it looks much more modern and the open files window is more welcoming as opposed to events's, which is just blank with an open button in the top left. Like Showtime, it uses the new file picker, but that's not where the changes end. Papers moves annotation options from the header bar to the right-click menu, and replaces the zoom options in the header bar with zoom in and zoom out buttons in the bottom right. The page count is also now on the right of the header bar instead of the left, while the search icon is now on the left in the sidebar instead of the right, in order to be consistent with other GNOME apps, and the basic app options were moved into their own menu in the sidebar, also for consistency with other GNOME apps, while the rest remained in the menu that was already there, although slightly reorganized. One of the options in that menu, the Document Properties dialog, was also redesigned to look more modern. The night mode in Papers is also smarter than the one in Events, because it doesn't fully invert the colors anymore, rather only inverting what is necessary, and it also turns on dark mode for the app itself. Also, some neglected UI problems like in the Annotations tab have been fixed, and the Bookmarks tab has seemingly been removed. Gnome Discs, a pretty neglected app with an ugly, overly compact, and sort of incomplete looking empty design has been heavily modernized with a major level wide to UI overhaul and a new layout, and is now a stunningly beautiful app with an easy to understand and complete looking design that fits in with the rest of the Gnome ecosystem. In my opinion, this, alongside Showtime, is the most major app upgrade in Gnome 48. The new event dialog in GNOME Calendar has been heavily redesigned, moving the calendar selection menu from the header bar to its own drop-down box below the title and location input boxes. The schedule section has been redesigned, replacing the all-day toggle and weird, ugly date and time selection system with a new toggle group containing an all-day option for an event that lasts the whole day, and a time slot option for an event that only lasts for a specified time of the day. Time zones are also supported now, and the start date, end date, and repeat drop-down boxes are separated which is visually nicer. 
Oh, and if there's any GNOME devs watching this, the search icon in Calendar should be moved left into the sidebar like it was with Papers for more consistency with other GNOME apps. In Contacts, the birthday editing dialog has been modernized to match other GNOME 48 apps. And that's about it. Pretty small update this time around. In Maps, the favorite option is no longer grayed out, which could previously cause confusion, and it is now animated, which is a subtle but nice touch. Maps also apparently includes a new point of interest editing window, although I'm not sure how to access it. Presumably, I'd need an OpenStreetMap account, which I don't have, so sadly, I can't show this change. Like Contacts, it's a pretty small update. And I believe the favorite section should have been updated like it was in Epiphany, to look more modern and consistent. But hopefully that happens next release. The GNOME Circle has gained four new apps. Drum Machine, which is a simple and pretty fun app for making drum beats, IOTAS, which is a pretty featureful note-taking app with various formatting options, categorization features, and Nextcloud support, Key Punch, which is a simple app for practicing your typing skills by measuring how many words per minute you can type and how accurate you are while doing so, and Exercise Timer, which is pretty self-explanatory, but it's an app for timing your different kinds of workouts, preparation time, exercise time, and rest time. Now let's take a look at visual changes to the GNOME shell itself. Firstly, the new Adwaita Spinner widget introduced in GNOME 47 has mostly replaced the old GTK Spinner in most apps and throughout the GNOME shell. GDM has also switched to the new Spinner, which can be seen when logging in. Next, notification stacking has been introduced, meaning notifications from the same app will be grouped into one stack, keeping the notification list organized and easy to navigate. When you click a stack, it'll show all of the notifications in that stack, as well as the app name at the top and a button to minimize the notifications back into the stack. Next, GNOME 48 finally replaced the old and unmaintained Cantorel font with their own fork of enter called it White to Sands, which disambiguates the lowercase l by adding a curve at the bottom. The l with the curve is the one thing I feared GNOME losing with the replacement of Cantorel, because it was nice, easy to distinguish from an eye, and part of the theme to a degree, but gladly, it remains. A new font called it Y to Mono, forked from the Iosefka Monospace font to better match Inter, has also been added to replace Source Code Pro. Next, corners of buttons, windows, and entry fields have been more rounded, which is a subtle but nice touch. Banners also have a new gray color instead of following your accent color like before, and if the banner has an action button, it depends. Sometimes it will follow your accent color, and other times it'll be semi-transparent, and therefore gray as well. Some icons have also been replaced with new ones, for example the power mode icon in the system tray, the arrow icons on settings toggles that reveal more options, and many more. Lastly, Libadwaito 1.7 comes with a new toggle group widget, which is a more beautiful and practical replacement for linked boxes of toggle buttons, and a new wrap box widget, which is basically a list of tags that can be created or deleted, and can have various uses like search tags, keywords, and more. Next, let's take a look at GNOME's under the hood changes and improvements. Firstly, global shortcuts have been introduced, allowing apps to have system-wide shortcuts that can be used anywhere as long as the app with those global shortcuts is open or running in the background. This can be useful with the Eyedropper app, for example, if you want to quickly capture a color while in a different app or section of the system. These global shortcuts can be edited or removed in the global shortcuts page of, in this case, the Eyedropper's info and permissions page in the apps tab of settings. Next, GNOME 48 has better function key support. If your keyboard has a find key, it can be used in many cases to start a search, and copy, paste, cut, undo, and redo keys can now be used in entries and fields. Next, Orca screen reader shortcuts, including caps lock as a modifier, now properly support Wayland, which is a big step for GNOME and GDM accessibility on Wayland. Next, GNOME 48 introduces support for dynamic triple buffering, meaning that it renders the next two frames in the background that are then ready to display after the current frame, meaning smoother animations and less stutters. 
Next, GNOME 48 has received many other general performance improvements, like more memory-efficient file indexing for large folders, a 5% performance improvement when loading folders containing many files with thumbnails, and a 10% performance improvement when scrolling to reveal more files, resource efficiency improvements to GNOME's JavaScript engine, better performance for GPU users with monitors, and performance optimizations to the latest GTK version. Next, Mutter and GTK now support the Wayland Cursor Shape protocol, which can help with fixing theming inconsistencies and scaling bugs throughout the system and different apps. Lastly, GNOME 48 opens windows in the center of the screen by default instead of the top left, which is a very welcome change in my opinion. When you open a window and then move it, it'll again open it in the center upon next launch instead of its last state, which I personally appreciate, but I know some people may not. Overall, GNOME 48 is a pretty big release compared to previous releases, and definitely a great one. Next, let's take a look at Ubuntu 25.04 Plucky Puffin. Firstly, Ubuntu got the latest version of Apt, Apt 3, which significantly improves its UI in the terminal, making it nicer, a bit colorful, and more organized. And speaking of apt, apt key has been removed since it is no longer needed due to superior integrated key management. Next, Yaru app icons were scaled down a little bit so that they are consistent with other app icons and don't look bigger than them, and I'm not sure if this is just me, but the Yaru app icons look more squarish, which is interesting. On the topic of UI changes, the window controls have been made a bit smaller for some reason, and the installer has gotten a few changes with the new encryption and ZFS options, and the automated installation option has been renamed to Automated with Auto Install File, presumably for more clarity. Next, the original Ubuntu startup sound introduced in the last Ubuntu version to celebrate its 20th anniversary has been disabled by default, although you can re-enable it if you want to. Also, an interesting change was the inclusion of an all-purple default wallpaper, since Ubuntu's default theme color has only been orange for a while now, and every default wallpaper in the past few releases has had at least some sort of orange tinge in it. Moving on to under the hood changes, Ubuntu 25.04 ships the latest and greatest Linux kernel 6.14, as well as introducing a new policy to always ship the latest kernel in every new Ubuntu release going forward, and NVIDIA Dynamic Boost is pre-configured for better performance if supported by your system, letting the GPU take more power while the CPU takes less. And of course, Ubuntu 25.04 got GNOME 48 and all of its changes. Overall, Ubuntu 25.04 was a pretty small release, but it introduced some good changes and improvements. Lastly, let's take a look at Fedora 42. Firstly, the Fedora KDE spin has been promoted to full edition status, now called Fedora KDE Plasma Desktop, and is now being promoted side by side the flagship Fedora Workstation Edition, which of course uses GNOME. Next, Fedora 42 introduces a new spin with the up-and-coming Cosmic Desktop, which is pretty exciting, and lastly, Fedora 42's Anaconda installer has finally received the great redesign, and I personally never had any issues with the old Anaconda installer, despite it being unconventional, but a lot of people did, and the new Anaconda is definitely a lot better in terms of looks, layout, and simplicity. Overall, Fedora 42 is, like GNOME 48, a pretty big release compared to the previous releases, and definitely a good one. If you really like my work and want to support me, I have a Penguin Byte channel membership with two tiers. The King Penguin tier, which gives you a Penguin Byte badge next to your username, access to exclusive emojis, and priority reply to comments, and an Emperor Penguin tier, which gives you everything in the King Penguin tier, plus shoutouts, members-only content, VIP Discord access, and more. Check them out by clicking the join button below. Subscribe if you like my content, and thanks for watching, see you next time.